so the message today is from 2 Chronicles chapter 7. You probably are familiar with chapter 7, verse 14, if my people will humble themselves and pray. We tend to take that out of its context. Uh, it doesn't really hurt it too much when we do that, but it's important that we look at the whole context of what we're going to do today. And in the light of the, the title of the message, God's Word is Blessing. Did you know that God's Word is Blessing? We've been talking about God's Word. God's Word is power. We've looked at that. God's Word is truth. Today it's God's Word is Blessing. And that's why we sang Showers of Blessing before the message. Did you know that that song is incomplete as it's written? God's Word is blessing. That's true. But it's essential to understand that the blessing of God's Word is conditional. We cannot ask God for blessing, just ask God for blessing in whatever state we are, and necessarily expect that he's going to answer that prayer. Because God's blessing, the blessing of God's word, is conditional. Let's read our passage. It starts in chapter 7, 2 Chronicles, verse 11. And we're going to read down through verse 22. Now this... this event takes place just after Solomon, King Solomon had finished building the temple, the first temple. And he had, he had in dedicating the temple, he had prayed this really long prayer asking God to bless his house, his people, his country, the, the nation. And after he had finished all of that and the dedication of the temple was done I get the impression from reading this account in uh, what is it first Kings or second Kings first Kings anyway that this happened the night after the dedication ceremony and uh, and this is what happened starting in verse 11 thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord in the king's house all that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord in his own house he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by name, my name humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to the prayer that's made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house, that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne, as I covenanted with David your father, saying, You shall not lack a man to rule Israel. But if you turn aside and forsake my statutes and my commandments that I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from my land that I have given you, and this house that I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And at this house, which was exalted, everyone passing by will be astonished, and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will say, Because they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this disaster on them. Now, right off the bat, some hard-thinking people will say, well, 
This passage doesn't apply to us nowadays. This applies to the nation of Israel back in the days of King Solomon. However, Jesus or God, when he said, talked to Solomon, said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and etc. And we look we took a few Sundays to address the issue about who is Israel. And we, the church, are part of Israel. So what that's why the Old Testament is part of the Bible, because what applied to them applies to us, folks. And this truth that God's word is blessing and that that blessing is conditional applies to us just as much as it did to the nation of Israel and to King Solomon. Now, there are some things that Jewish writers did to try to drive points home and, and they didn't worship numbers, but they, they engaged in numerology, which means they, when they wrote... They did things in certain ways with certain patterns in order to emphasize things. And in this passage, there are three if-then statements that have to do with God's blessing in connection with His Word. And we want to look at those briefly. And this does lead quite well into our time of communion, which is coming in a few minutes. So the first one is in verses 14 through 16, the first, the first if then, and this is the one we know, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. This is a big if. If you want to be blessed, then you need to know God's Word. If you want to be blessed, then you need to obey God's Word. But first of all, if you want to be blessed by God, this is what it says. If my people will repent, repentance involves three things that are listed here. If my people will humble themselves, admit that they are sinners, admit that they on their own, by their own efforts, cannot stop sinning. If my people will humble themselves and pray, that is actually talk to God. God wants us to interact with Him. My people will humble themselves and pray and what? Seek my face. That is, come into his presence. Communicate with him. Hear what he has to say. If my people will repent, then I will listen to them because they are mine. That is a paraphrase, but that's pretty much what, they're, what God is telling Solomon here. If my people will repent, then I will listen to them. Because they are my people. Hi, dear. Uh, we've, there's a verse that talks about this in Psalm. It says, Come and hear all you who fear God, that is, His people. And I will tell you what He's done for my soul. I cried to Him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. But if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because He's not rejected my prayer or removed His steadfast love from me. David could say this because he was obeying God's Word. And it was because of his obedience that God was listening to him. If my people will repent, humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, then God says, I will listen to you. But if you will not obey me, I will not listen to you. 
You can ask for showers of blessing all you want. But if you will not obey me, God says, you will never get a blessing from me. Sounds harsh, but it's true. We take we don't take God in His Word too often. We think, oh, He doesn't really mean that. He loves me. He'll overlook all of that. Man, if my dad overlooked all the things I did as a kid and didn't discipline me, I would be a wreck now. Because He loved me, He disciplined me. He didn't overlook my sins, my bad behavior. He did not overlook all those character flaws and bless me anyway. No. And God's the same way. He is our loving Father. Because He loves us, He's careful to discipline us and uh, He will not listen to us until we make things right with Him. I can remember times when I wanted something Go to my dad and say, Dad, can I have whatever? And he'd say, didn't you tell hear what I told you to do? I'm not going to listen to you until you do what I told you to do. He did that much, a lot of times in my life. And God is the same one. If we want something from God, we better be obeying Him. Because He will not listen unless we do. That's the first if then. The second if then is in verses 17 through 8, 17 and 18. Talking to Solomon specifically as one of God's leaders, God told him, as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, according, doing according to all I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and rules, then I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted with David your father, saying, you shall not lack a man to rule. If you will follow me, if you will obey me, in fact, if my people, God says, will obey me completely. That's what he was telling Solomon. If you obey me completely, if you follow my word to the last letter, then I will make you secure forever. God is not happy when we take the attitude that we can pick and choose what we are going to do in obedience to Him and what we're not. Did you know that? No, I won't kill anybody, Lord, but I'm sure going to keep holding a grudge against that person over there because they upset me. God says not to do that. But we choose, I won't do this I won't do that, but I'm going to still do that. Even when God says don't. And when we expect Him to pour down showers of blessing on us. God's not going to do that. He doesn't do that. Have you ever wondered why your life, why you've had times of misery in your life as a Christian? God does not just arbitrarily let you go through bad times. Sometimes we go through bad times even when we're obedient for a specific reason. The Bible talks about our suffering for the sake of others. But there are other times we go through bad things because of our own disobedience. If my people will obey me completely, God says, then I will make them secure forever. There was a long passage in the end of Deuteronomy where God laid out all the blessings for obedience and all the curses for disobedience. And I'm going to read the whole passage, but I'm going to read a little bit of the blessing part here. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 28. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And He will bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to Himself, as He swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in His ways. 
and all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give you rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you shall only go up and not down, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go other, after other gods, and to serve them. If you want the blessing of God's word, you must obey him completely. If it's in his word, we need to obey it. If he tells us something specific to us, we need to obey it. Do you remember the story of Jonah? God told him to go to Nineveh and warn them of coming judgment. Jonah said, oh, I don't want to do that. They won't listen to me anyway. And he went through an experience because he chose not to obey the Lord in that thing. It's the same with us. We cannot get out of it. We cannot avoid the consequences of, of disobeying God's Word. God's truth is absolute. God's truth is not a matter of our opinion. God's truth is God's truth. And we can't change it. We can't ignore it and expect to be blessed. We have to obey God's word. And Jesus himself said, look, my commands are not burdensome. It boils down to this one thing. Follow me. Do what I do. Listen to what I say. Follow me. Do what I do. It's that simple. Jesus himself said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. If my people will obey me completely, God says, I will make them secure forever. No one will snatch them out of my hand if they will follow me and do what I tell them to do. That's the second if then. The third if then is a negative one. If my people abandon me, meaning if my people do not repent and obey me completely, then I will abandon them. Have you guys ever had a friend who the only time you ever saw or heard from them was when they wanted something from, them, from you? That's not a friend. They've abandoned you. They only want you for their own ends. They've abandoned you. Because they're that way, how much incentive do you have to have a relationship with them? God's the same way. If we walk away from him, he will walk away from us. I will abandon them, God says. They will no longer be mine. And they will suffer disaster. That's what the third if then says that God told Solomon, verse 19 to 22. It says, If you turn aside and forsake my statutes and my commandments that I've set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from my land and I, that I have given you and the house that I have consecrated for my name and I will cast out of my sight. And I will make it a proverb and a byword among the peoples. And at this house which was exalted, everyone passing by will be astonished and say, what has the Lord do, done thus? Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? And they will say, because they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this disaster on them. 
Solomon himself is an example of this. He began well. He put God first. He had no other gods above God. But you read on later and you find out that Solomon made a god of women in his life. And those women brought him down. He walked away from the Lord. And he suffered. His descendants suffered. Disaster came to the entire nation because of what Solomon did. And that's what Saul, the Lord said to Solomon in this, if then he says to us, if my people abandon me, not repenting and obeying me completely, then I will abandon them and they will no longer be mine and they will suffer disaster. Folks, as, as the writer of Hebrews said, it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God. God's not looking to punish us, but because He loves us, He's careful to discipline us. He wants us to obey Him. He wants to bless us, and He cannot and will not unless we obey Him completely. <clears throat> Again, from Deuteronomy chapter 28, after giving us all the blessings for obedience, we are told the curses for disobedience. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all His commandments and His statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall be you in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Cursed shall, be, shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration in all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. Folks, if you're having a tough time in your life, if you're wondering... Why am I going through this? Ask yourself the question. Or ask God the question, actually. Lord, what have I done in disobedience to you? Please show it to me so I can humble myself before you and confess it and repent of it and seek your face and turn so that I can turn from what I've been doing. If you want a blessing, you've got to get rid of the disobedience. It's that simple. It's a broken record. Three times repeated. If you want blessed, obey God's word. If you don't care, or if you want something more than you want God's blessing, go do whatever you want. But know that there are consequences. Because God loves you as His people. As one of His people, as one of His kids, He loves you. And He wants to keep you close to Him. And it's our sin that separates us from God. So to sum all this up, we can look at it this way. First of all, as a child of God, if you are not blessed, it's because you're not obedient. You know, we have this tendency, when things go bad, to blame God. Lord, what did I do to deserve this? Well, if you listen, I'll tell you, he says. But, but we tend to blame him, don't we? In fact, Solomon said this in the Proverbs. <laughs> when a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. It's nothing new under the sun. We're just the same as everybody else. We get frustrated because life's going wrong, and so we blame God when we should be looking at ourselves. 
Paul told us about this when he said in Galatians, don't be deceived, folks. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. What are you sowing in your life today? Are you being blessed? As a child of God, if you're not blessed, it's because you're not obedient. The second thing that we can say is that as a child of God, if you are obedient, you will be blessed. That's the promise. God wants to bless us. God loves us, His children. He has so many blessings waiting to pour on us and we will just obey Him completely. We can't compromise. We can't pick and choose when and where and how we are going to obey Him and expect Him, as I said earlier, to be blessed. Again, from the very first part of Deuteronomy 28, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. As a child of God, if you are obedient, you will be blessed. Sometimes we wait, have to wait for the blessing, but the promise is as good as the reality. There's a whole chapter in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, that illustrates that. The blessing is, the promise is every good as the reality. If God said it, it will happen. If you obey Him, He will bless you. So we can sum the whole thing up this evening by putting it this way. For God's people, His promised blessings are always conditional upon our obedience. His promised blessings are always conditional upon our obedience. He never changes. You can bank on that truth. And that is why Jesus Himself said in Luke chapter 6, Why do you call Me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to Me and hears My words and does them, I will show you what he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. For God's people, His promised blessings are always conditional upon our obedience.